So according to my handout, we have this, these two steps. Create a JKS file, and you really don't need to do that that often. Once you've done it right the first time, you have your JKS file, and you use it to sign your apps. The part that you will do several times is the signing part. You've got your JKS, and you use your JKS file to sign as many apps as you want. Well, the last step that I had in my handout, that I had to close this, is that now you've got an APK file. So if you go back to your, your project folder, so I'll go to my flash drive and I'll go to my app project folder. We, in the project folder, we have a, uh, a platforms folder. If you look inside of platforms, my app has the Android platform and the browser platform. Uh, if you don't have browser, that's fine, but you should at least have Android. So inside of your Android folder, open that one, bunch of stuff here, build, there's a build folder, open the build folder, inside of build, then we have outputs, open the outputs folder, and then finally APK, if you open the APK folder, I have Android debug.apk, this is what I worked with, you know, back at 6.30, and then once I've been doing this release, when I did Android build release with my JKS file, it created this release ready version. This version that is that is that what the is what the app stores want. This version that is also more compressed and secure. If you notice, then the debug version is 1.7 megabytes approximately, and the release version is 1.1. So it's been compressed, it's been encrypted, it's got your credentials built into it. My handout says your final signed APK is in this folder. Move it to your desktop or flash drive and give it a name such as my app one dash release, a short name for your app. Congratulations, you have a, re a release ready version of your app. So this Android release, I'm going to move it, copy it or cut it, but I'm going to move it to my F drive, top level of the F drive. I'm just moving it somewhere else. This is the final file of my project. Then what might have happened is when you did uh, Android build release, it didn't actually build it with your JKS file. So run Android build release again and make sure at the very last step that it says it created your release version. If not, we'll check it in a little bit. Yes? So the dot the that's generated initially, that's only to task So each version, like the second version, you don't have to generate another When we look on the handout on the first part of creating the JKS file, we created the JKS file, we made up a password, we generated a password, we only do that once. Yes. But when we use the JKS file, which is Cordova build release, we reuse the password we created before. So we're not creating a we're not inventing a password every time. Just the just the first time we create the JKS file. Yeah. So Android release, uh, I'm gonna I'm changing its name. My handout recommends my SDCE1. This can be any name, but every app that you create and you do build release on will be called Android Release. So every one of your apps will be called Android Release. You're going to lose track of them. My handout here is saying whatever the name of your app is, you know, put the name here. It's version 1, and this is the release ready version. So I've if it's unsigned, it still didn't work. Your your Android build release didn't work. You mistyped your password or you missed your alias. There's no release version. Yes. Yes, if it's still the debug version or the one that says unsigned, that's not right. You, it has to be the release version. Typing your passwords should create the release version. So is this where we would start the version? My SDC 1.1 dash release type of 
Um, not, not quite, because that version control is happening in the config file. Remember, in the config file, here's where we've got version 1.1, mm -hmm. version code 1. That number that I've got on that file there is somewhat arbitrary. Uh, I'm keeping track of my apps, and, I, and I'm putting a 1. I, yeah, I could put a 1.2 if this is my other version, but it's not quite important what I name this for yourself it is. So I'm just wondering, that would be in the root of, the, of your company, for example. But then we would have to go into the config files of each individual app to see the true name. The true it. name and true version number. Okay. Yeah. I'm just putting it on the F drive, but really I would put it in a folder called, you know, finished apps. Uh, I'm just putting it somewhere to find it, but that's the finished app. So things still still could have gone wrong. We'll fix those things later. We need to move on. If it if you didn't get your release version, we'll come back to it. What I need to do to move on now is well, we need to start to talk about setting up our App Store account. So if you got it up to this point, great. If you didn't, we'll figure it out later. What we what next we need to do is go to your web browser. So wherever you're at, if you're not quite it's not quite working, don't fall behind, please. Let's move on here. Let's go to develop android.com So we've gone through a design part, we've gone through a develop part, now we're at distribute. All this documentation about distributing your app is listed here, of course. The short answer is on the top right corner you have developer console. On the top right corner, click Developer Console. This is going to ask you to sign in. Now, before we sign in, let's see if I can find the right screen to tell you. In short, the Developer Console is where we're going to upload your app, and it's not free. This is the part of the class where there is something paid. This is the part where if we want to release our app to the to the Android App Store, we need to pay. Now I'm not asking you to take out your credit card. I'm just saying this is the part where we're going to think about this because if you do want to release your app for real to real apps, you have to pay to get into this thing. I believe it's about $25 or $28. Somewhere here it'll say it. But I'm not going to ask you to do this. I'm not going to ask you to pay to create this because we have an alternative. We have this app store, the Android app store. We also have another app store that's pretty famous. Have you heard of this little website called Amazon.com? Here's another place where you can release your apps completely for free. We'll see the pros and cons in a moment. But obviously, developer.android.com is one app store to release your apps. You have to pay $28 one time to release your apps. If we wanted to eventually do this for iOS, we would go to developer.apple.com, set up a developer console there, and there it's a little bit more expensive. It's $99 per year. With Android, it's $28 one time. So this is, again, another reason why Android development is very popular. The barriers to entry are a lot lower. I have to have Mac hardware. I have to have a developer account, $99 per year. I have to do a lot of setup. I have to provision my device and register it. So development on Apple is more difficult. That's why I focus on Android first. Question? It's $99 or $28 per developer. So I create an account here. $28 and I can release 50 apps. No problem. Uh, it's just that I need my first payment to get into the system. Same thing with iOS. I'm victorapps.com. I'm going to create an, an account of $99 and I can release as many apps as I want. And the next year I have to, to resubscribe 
another ninety-nine dollars. What's that? For Apple. But if we do it for the Android, only one time. But we're gonna do it the even more free way. Amazon. We're gonna distribute our app to Amazon. And because uh, it's a bit of a newer app store. Obviously, Amazon's been around literally 20 years. If you didn't know that, Amazon's been around since the 90s, and that was 20 years ago. So, uh, Amazon's been a around a while, but their app store uh, portal is a little younger. So, it's free here compared to the Android one. And it's not that expensive here on Android. That's like a couple of pizzas or a nice big pizza loaded with a lot of great stuff, $28. Mm -hmm. But I'm not asking you to pay for anything. So we'll do the Amazon way. Amazon is developer.amazon.com. We're going to go through this process together. We can make it up completely. That's fine. It doesn't matter. I will make it up right now. But if I wanted to release my app for real, I would want real information. Amazon Developer Portal is the spot where we can release apps and games, or we can learn to develop for Alexa, you know, their voice-activated thing. This is where we can use their web services. Remember all of this time I've been saying about the database pouch is currently internal. It works on the device itself. If I wanted the data on this device to then transfer to someone else's other device, we need cloud infrastructure. Amazon Web Services. It's not free. That one's not free. But for us, what we'll do is uh, we'll create an account. On the top right corner, click Sign In. Here it'll ask for a sign in or to sign up. You probably already have an Amazon account. I would not use your existing Amazon account. I would, I would uh, recommend that you've got a login for your for yourself as your person that you're buying things in an account as a developer and because just for school purposes I'm gonna make this up I'm gonna say I'm a new customer and I'm gonna make up something I'm gonna write it down to log in with it next time because I'm gonna forget but I'm gonna make this up that's fine I, I give you permission to make this up if you want to use a real account a real email login you could I'm going to select I'm a new customer and then sign in. Your name is, put your real name or not. Type a password. The procedure would be similar on, on Google. If we go through the Google process, it'll ask us for a variety of information, just like it's going to ask us here for Amazon. In general, notice we've got a few tabs. Profile, Distribution Agreement, Payments. So on Google Play or Amazon App Store or iOS, uh, you know, uh, Apple App Store, we could give away our apps or we could sell our apps. 99 cents at a time, 5.99, whatever. So we can sell our apps and it'll ask for payment information. So it'll ask, what's your bank information? And if that sounds obtrusive, well obviously you have to do it. If you're gonna get paid, you need to put your bank information. Uh, I'm, I don't have my bank information right now. I don't want to put it in. This is a fake account. You will be able to add your bank info later. These fields are pretty self-explanatory, but let's look at them. So what's your region, first name, last name, email, phone number, required. Again, I'm going to make this up. I'm probably putting in someone's real email address. Sorry about that. Or real phone number. Skip that. Here's a spot for a fax number, optional. Developer name or company displayed on your apps at Amazon. 
So this is a name that's going to appear when people search and find your app. Let me show you the example here from previous classes. You can go to Amazon and search my SDCE at some point and find people's apps and you'll see, well this is by Fred Zuckerman and this one is by Delgato Magante Exclusive Apps and this one is by Garay Apps. Quick Start Prototypes. So it's asking you right here, what's the name that you want to appear as the app developer? You can make it up. Smith Designs Co. You're an app developer. Your description, optional. You have a maximum of 4,000 characters. The point of this, and we'll talk about it in deeper later, is that we have to engage in some marketing. We, we spent this time developing our app. And we still have things we want to add to it. But let's say our app is perfect and it has everything that we en envisioned. But no one's downloading it. No one knows you exist. We'll talk. Uh, we'll have a lecture on marketing. We'll have a lecture on trying to get visibility for your app, trying to go viral, getting people to find out about your app, to download it pay you 99 cents and make you rich 99 cents at a time. So the description here is part of that. I have 4,000 characters to explain and to put in sentences and phrases and keywords to help me get found. If I, if I search, you know, on Amazon, fitness app, people's fitness apps show up here. And those descriptions are either in the, those keywords are either in the description of the app or the developer or somewhere. And that's how you get found. This is search engine optimization to some degree. SEO, which we'll talk more in detail later. And this can be edited. So I'll say something like um, Smith Designs. And you, you don't have to type anything here. I'm just giving you an example. Smith Designs. Uh, co focuses on productivity apps. Productivity apps for all ages. Our apps, blah, blah, blah. Again, I'm thinking of a sentence or two up to 4,000 characters of sentences of keywords that people may search for that may find my app. When we actually upload the app, we have another spot there to put even more phrases and <coughs> findable terms. This is asking for an address required, customer support email, customer phone number, and customer support website. Again, we can make all of these up, but if you're going to be a real app developer, I don't want to put my real home address here. It's going to then be in the Amazon database. People might find it. I would recommend here, if you're eventually going to release apps for real, I would think about getting a P.O. Box. You know, a P.O. Box in the real world is not free, but it's not that expensive. And you can have something like P.O. Box you know, 237 San Diego, California. Nine. I'm making it up right now. You should you need something real later if you if you make this fake but you want to use it for a real purposes later, your app your your account could get shut down. Somewhere in the terms of service it says you're not gonna make this stuff up. Uh, customer support email address. You can use a real email that you have, you can make up a brand new Gmail account such as support uh, at gmail.com. More professionally, help at victor.com. That assumes I have my .com. I mean, you've been buying a .com, getting a .com is not free. There are some free examples that you shouldn't really bother with. They, they have problems. You want to get the real paid services. This is completely fake. I'm making it up. Right. Again, this phone number, I could do the same one. 
you could get a Google Voice number. Have you heard of Google Voice? You can go to you can go to Google and get a free Google Voice number, a brand new number, which is linked to your existing phone number. So people will call that phone number, which you can screen, instead of going directly to your phone number. People can then call that Google Voice number and leave a voicemail. And you'll get a text message that says, someone left you a voicemail, here it is transcribed. So instead of giving away your real phone number, get a Google Voice. And then the website is optional, and if you have a website, you would put that in there. Any questions on this screen? Click Save and Continue. App distribution agreement uh, this is a really long agreement that says how you will and won't use the system. I thought I saw something there about spyware. Basically, your content will not contain viruses, spyware, Trojan horses, or other malware. If it will, then you can't upload it. And somewhere here it also tells you that here it is. Royalties. Even though creating the Amazon account is free, they're still going to get a cut of the price of your app. They have to charge you to keep the to keep the app store running. In pretty much every app store, they take 30%. So if you sell your apps for 99 cents, you know, a dollar they keep about 30 cents. So it's saying here, your apps, you will get 70% of the price. Amazon does that, Google does that, Apple does that, Microsoft, they all take some percentage. So creating the account is free completely here. But if you sell your apps, they will take 30%. And if you go to Google Play, it costs $28 one time to create the account, plus the 30% per app sale. So if you agree to all of that, great. Except if you don't, then you can't publish your apps through, through here. No royalty is payable with apps listing of zero. Obviously, 30% of zero is zero, so they earn nothing. Accept and continue. Do you plan to monetize your apps by charging for apps or selling in-app items? So we'll see that there's a few different ways to make money. You can make money by having the, uh, the upfront payment, 99 cents. You can make money by, ha by giving away your app for free and then have in-app purchases. Like that's most common for games. You get the first two levels for free and then the game is so exciting I need to go to level three and it says, okay, click here to buy level three, 99 cents. And the person ended up paying forty dollars for that zero for that free game. And of course, you probably heard horror stories of kids paying, you know, charging ten thousand dollars on their parents' credit cards. So, here's a couple of ways to make money. Another way is monetize apps by displaying ads. You could give your app away for free, and it's the full version, and then put ads in your app. You've probably seen those, and you hate those too. But here's how you make money. They'll give you the code, and they'll put an ad on your app at the top or the bottom somewhere, and then the person's using your app, and they accidentally click on the ad, and you make money. Best case scenario, actually, they want to click on the ad, which never happens. Think about yourself. When was the last time you, you clicked on an ad for real? So here you can choose that. Make money this way, yes or no. These can be changed later if you want. And if on these you select yes, this is when you're going to set up to supply your bank information. So you can get your 70% of a dollar. You can do it later. You probably don't have this info now. You probably don't want to set this up right now. I'm creating a fake account. 
So I'll click Save and Continue. Why would anybody want to lose their app for free without, without any... It could be an educational time? app. It could be a nonprofit organization's app. It could be just completely, you know, uh, altruistic. Al altruistic and a person just wanting to create something and giving it away completely for free. Earning karma, good points, and all of that. Who knows? So, uh, okay. After a certain point, then uh, we get our login screen here. Uh, Dashboard, apps, Alexa, reports, support, documentation, settings. You can go back to settings eventually to... Um, you can go back to settings to make some of these changes, like for your bank. We currently have no apps yet. You'll see add a new app or at the top. You'll also see it if you're under the apps and services screen. Add a new app. Click on that, add a new app. We can unload it, we can upload an app that's Android, a mobile web version, or a PC or Mac app. So we can sell Windows or Mac apps from the, from the Amazon App Store. If only there was a way to create Windows apps. If only there was a way to create uh, you know, Mac apps, if only there was a way to do this, because we have a way to sell um, those here through Amazon. Anyway, so we've got the Android version. Click Next. App title. We're going to need to fill in a bunch of things, which we're not going to have time for today, but that's okay. We're going to have a bunch of things to fill in. This fake account that I created, hopefully you saved your password and such to log back into it next time. Or if you, um, you are using real login information, hopefully you remember it for, for next time. If you don't, you, you can create it again next time. We'll do a couple of these screens and we'll wrap up so, we, so we're, we're sure that everyone got their thing working. And the next time, we'll continue to set this up to, uh, to upload our app. We can publish it and then start working on version 2, because it's, it's never done. But here, I'm going to create a, an app with your last name, the name of your app. It's SKU, or SKU, is the stock keeping unit. It's an optional identifier if I've got a bunch of apps that I'm selling, maybe inside of my own system, I'm naming them something like I had inside, like we had seen my sdce1.release apk, but that's completely optional. I won't fill that in, just to have one, one less thing to do. Required category. On which of these categories does our, our, does our app best fit? So looking at them, what would you say? What is your opinion? What What is categories are app best suited for. Education. education. That might be a good one. Our app is about a school. It's an educational app. Maybe novelty, because it's the unofficial one. We'll go with education. And then subcategories. You might see subcategories depending on your main category. Uh, none of these really apply, I guess, so I won't select any more. If I filled in this support information when I first created the account, it will automatically fill in. If I didn't create that information, it asks for it here, and now it is required.
required. So I need some sort of tech support email, phone number, and website. I'm going to save that. There are then going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, six tabs that eventually I need to have completed. I can further edit whatever I've done here, but one tab is done. General info, one out of six. Once all of these are filled with green, I can then submit the app. Let's look at availability and pricing. There's a couple of ways to make money out of this. Um, a standard kind of app, which would be paid or free apps, in-app purchases, Amazon Underground. This is a, a different kind of system. Amazon Underground is kind of interesting, but it's kind of complex to set up. Amazon Underground is about I am publishing my app on Google Play and Amazon and uh, Apple Store. I'm publishing it on all of them. But on Amazon, it's where it's free. It's 99 cents on Google Play and it's 99 cents on Apple. So I'm going to do Amp Underground here to give away my app on Amazon, but I'm still going to get paid, but this time by usage. The longer a person uses my app, the more I get paid. But I have to have already have it being sold at Google Play and or Apple Store. So we're going to keep it basic, standard app. And you can read about what more Underground does by reading the documentation. This will be standard available in all countries. Yeah, I don't want to limit the countries, or if it's in English and I only want it to li limit it to English-speaking countries, I can do that. Select the country or region. Is my app free or not? Uh, if I turn on, yes, I'm going to sell it for some amount of money, I can type in here what I'm going to sell it for. This is a this is an unofficial app. It's a testing app. I wouldn't recommend to try to sell it. You'd have to then set up your bank information. That's a good point. Uh, for example, the Apple Store, they do check the app extensively and allow them or not, and they're, they're very strict. Uh, am, uh, the uh, Android st Store it has very little filtering. Amazon is kind of in the middle. It checks your app a little bit, but it, you, I've never had a problem with my students submitting it, almost never. So Apple is very strict, uh, Google is not strict at all, and Amazon's kind of in the middle, but more toward the not strict. Has this app already been released? So if I already released it elsewhere, I, I can mark that. And part of the reason that I might do no here is that if if you say, this is, I'm releasing this for the first time on Amazon, they give you a little boost. They like that. You're, you're putting Amazon first, so they will promote your app a little bit more. If instead, well, I already released it elsewhere, when, you might not get a big of a boost because you're not, you're not helping Amazon, so they're not going to help you, maybe. When would you like this to be available? I can schedule this. If I know I want it to be released the first of next month, I can do that. If I put nothing here, it'll be released as soon as it's approved. And the approval process is not so complicated with Amazon. So any questions on this screen? But if you release somewhere else, but you will say no, did they will find it? They, I don't know how strict they are. Maybe, <coughs> maybe they will find that and penalize you somehow. Maybe. I'll click Save. Going further, next one, description. Be careful about this screen. We'll see it in another screen. There's a save button that's yellow, and there's a save button that's gray. This is, says save, 
and add translation. This one down here is simply save. So don't click the save and add translation unless you're going to add a translation of your description. This is asking what's the name of your app, description, etc., etc., in English. If I click save and add, then it would give me another screen to add the Spanish version. That's not what I wanted. I just wanted to save what I wrote. So only select save unless you are writing multilingual versions of your description. Short description required, long description required, features, keywords optional. I'm going to say all of these are required, even the keywords, even though it doesn't say required, because these will help you get found also. So here's some ideas. Short description, the unofficial SDCE app. That's what I had in the description in the config XML file. Long description, um, find out about the best free classes being offered at San Diego Continuing Education. This is a test app. Maybe someone really will download it. That might be kind of cool, but it's not a real app, so perhaps mention it there. Keywords. Right here you would write a few keywords that um, helps you get found. Let's get back to bullets in a moment, but here I would write education, free, San Diego, Product features, three to five concise app features each on a new line. These product features will appear on the Amazon website. So we could say uh, name customization. What does our app do? There's name customization. There is class listings. There is um, save your custom class schedule. A few bullet points about what our app does. Obviously, for version 2, we'll add a few more things. I want to add the ability for a person to, to send an email. We're, we're going to set it up that the person can contact the developer, can share the app on Twitter. We're going to add some social media features. So we'll add some more bullet points a little later. We'll click Save there. Not Save and Add Translation. I'm only going to leave it in English, so I'll just click Save. If I wanted more languages, I can go through that. Images and multimedia, we'll have to spend more time next time. Uh, this is the part where we upload an app icon, screenshots, optional videos and such. We'll, we'll do it next time. Something to think about here. We're going to create some app assets that help you stand out compared to the competition. And if you look here, look at the examples for other companies. Some are just photos, some are icons, some are cartoons. Look at their designs. So I'm going to skip the images and multimedia. I don't have anything to upload at the moment. Content rating, so that we can confirm and reach the right audience. We have here items to fill out. How much of these things does our app have? Of none, moderate, or strong. How much violence does our app have? None. You don't. It's not really a game. Cartoon violence, none. Drugs, none. Nudity, none. Sex, none. Intolerance, none. Profanity, heck no academic. Is this app for educational purposes? 
sure. Oh, yes. Uh, additional information. Account creation or other personal info collected. Yes, the, we ask for the person to type their name, and the person is able to create a class list. I would recommend for some of these, if you're not quite sure, err on the side of caution. Put yes if, if it's kind of a maybe. If, if they do review your app, and you put a no here, and they feel you're creating a... you're asking for the person's name, that's personal info. Your app might be rejected because you falsely said no. Advertisements. Uh, well, it's kind of advertising the whole college, isn't it? The whole campus. But maybe I'm thinking in terms of ads that pop up to sell you something. Uh, what would you say? Yes or no? Maybe no. We'll do no. Is your app directed to kids under 13? No, you have to be at least 18 to, to take classes here. Is there gambling? No. Location detection or location-based services? Um, not at the moment, but we will add a map with GPS features. Yes? Giving tips. Was gambling Giving tips. Uh, no? Is this... You mean our app? No. Our app does would say no, but tips in general still wouldn't be gambling because gambling is gambling that's information more more like it. So later later we're gonna have location based services, so this can be changed. There's no GPS that checks a person's location at the moment, but if there were, I would select that. User-generated content, this is the same thing as before, yes, asking for their name. Privacy policy, required if app collects personal info. So if our app didn't collect personal info, we wouldn't have to put that required. But since we are, we need an address here. Now this This is a link on a website where there is some sort of privacy policy. So if I had a website, victorsapps.com slash privacy, there's a page on my website that spells out my privacy policy. If I search for privacy policy template, Privacy policy generator, privacy policy example, better yet, app privacy policy example or generator. You'll find plenty of examples for free or not that give you an example to create a policy. So it's required if your app collects information. What are you doing with that information? Most people will hardly look at it, but Amazon and Google and Apple will require that. For educational purposes, I'm going to make it up. But for your real app, you would need something online that specifies what are you doing with the information collected. Just out of curiosity, if I look at one of these, privacy policy for iOS apps, it's probably general enough. So you see there, you can go look at these various examples. I'll we'll save that one.
add four out of six. Next, binary files. This one also has a save and add. I forgot to mention over here for multimedia, whenever there's a save and add, it means you're going to add different versions. You have save and add localized media. So I've added thumbnails and icons that specify one language, for example, or one region, and then I can upload localized media for a different locality. The uh, English icons are different than the Japanese icons. So under binaries, it's sort of similar. I can upload different versions of my binary. I can create an APK version for some devices and an APK for other devices. So unless you're doing that, don't click Save and Add. You want Save. Apply Amazon DRM. It says Yes, Recommended. This will further encrypt your, your app so that people don't break into it, and also sets it up so that the version that was downloaded, one person downloaded this file, they can't pass it around to other people, especially if it's a paid app. You can turn that off, and then your app will be a little bit more open for people to pass it around, but most likely, if you're especially selling your app, you don't want that. Various other internal info, don't worry about that. And then binary. If your app is more than 150 megabytes, you need to FTP it. Ours is only about 1.1 megabyte. So click to upload a binary. And find that APK file if, if you have it. If not, we can do it next time. But find that APK file. It's on my flash drive. I put it in the root. I called it my SDCE1 release APK. It's going to upload it, scan it. This is what I said before. Remember, the IDs are important, so someone else is using my ID here. I'll change mine later. That's what I'm saying. There can be 50 calculator apps, but they have a unique ID. So if you used com.jones.mysdce in your XML file, you are hurting me. So I'll fix it later. But if you did upload it, it'll then give you information about your particular app. That's fine. It might say device support, languages, export. You have to activate that one. And that's basically saying your app does not include encryption, which is something that is that has export restrictions. If you're using Google Maps, use instead Amazon Maps. That's fine. Binary alias, that's fine. Binary one. Testing instructions. So if you want to tell if they do test the device, if Amazon tests it by hand, you want to give them an example here how to save, how to test it. You don't have to put anything there, so I'll click Save. You then get a green. I, mine's not ready yet because I have to upload a, a different version. But uh, this is all we can do for the moment. We'll have to create graphics next time. We'll get all of these set up. Then we'll be able to publish. And it usually takes people like one day, and their app is available. And in short, if you step back for a moment and think about it, We've gone through these three months and we've created an app from scratch. Yes, we're all creating the same kind of app, but you have the knowledge, you have the basic puzzle pieces of, about learning some HTML, learning about Cordova, creating the app account. You have the basic tools to be able to start uploading real apps, free or paid apps. Will you be able to create the next Instagram? No, even in the three months that you take this class, if you take it more than once, that's still not quite enough. An advanced app like Instagram and Facebook and all of that is very advanced. But we have the building blocks to start to create apps, and we'll spend some time on your possible idea. At the very least, we'll have this one that we're creating together. 
this is as far as we'll go for the moment. Make sure you write down your login information. We're going to log back into this on Thursday to continue the process and then work on a version 2 with more features. Maybe even changing the design of our app. Everyone's got that boring gray design. We need to talk about changing the colors and that cool stuff. We're going to get to that. I'm just going to save it for the moment. At the top right corner you can sign out or explore other screens if you want. That's it for the moment. I'm going to upload my my code um, and the videos and that's it.